What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. And finally, 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 there's been a huge PBE patch. So we are basically at what we're gonna be at when the set goes live, barring any huge changes. They did some more changes today, which was like the last like like mid-size patch. And they'll probably do like some small changes before it goes live. But with the, the pattern of recent sets, this is honestly gonna be sort of like mostly what we're on. Uh, so, went to watch some games from the GOAT of North America. No, not Malala, because he wasn't streaming, I think. Uh, also, I don't know, I mean, Dish Soap. I mean, is he a, is he a better player than... I I mean, look, we can't. We don't have to get into all that right now, but Dish Soap's great, and he streams a lot. So, let's watch him play TFT and uh, and improve at Teamfight Tactics. Uh, this was also a game that is very much of note, because you can see immediately, we got dropped a Tristana, and we have this Kobuko. We are one unit off of having fortune here. So Dish is actually gonna make the call here to pre-level because not only can we potentially play a strong board if we miss on fortune, but if we hit on fortune with the pre-level, then I mean, we'll, we'll have hit on fortune and he gets dropped metabolic accelerator here and he actually gets the Teemo here. So we have a three fortune at two one here with metabolic accelerator. Now, if you're not familiar with fortune, because I haven't actually done a video on it yet, you saw right as we got fortune in, we saw that little number two appear. When you have fortune in, it varies how many rounds it takes for you to actually cash out. It's different from units like Pilter or traits like Piltover in the past or Underground. Those traits, you know, you had Lost Streak, and then when you win, that's when you cash out. Uh, and it's also different from Heart Steel. Heart Steel, it's just every four rounds you would cash out, and then you could raise the stakes if you wanted to. This is different from both of those in that it's actually random how many rounds it takes to cash out. So we lost that round. We got one more round to go, and then we are going to see our first cash out. Um, and then after that, it's going to roll another dice. Uh, so, or another die, sorry. Um, so, one to six. You know, it, it could be six rounds slow next cash out. It could be, you know, three rounds slow next cash out. It's pretty interesting. Uh, if you want to get it in super, super early and start stacking up your cash out like we're doing here, you can do that. If you want to get in later, get it in for a few rounds. Depends on what the die roll, I guess, how many rounds you actually want to keep it in. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, econ trade. Very different from stuff we've seen before. Uh, as you're going to see there, that was our cash, uh, but he decided to basically raise the stakes. Uh, and you saw the next number on the left there that we rolled was a five. So we are going to be five rounds until our next cash out. Like you saw there, it does function exactly the same as most previous econ trades, probably every econ trade for the rest of time because they realized that raising the stakes is fun and it's good for business. But yeah, you can you can raise the stakes as much as you want. Uh, keep going and keep gaining more stacks. So yeah, uh, it is also uh, a Lost Streak trait. You don't really want to win with this trait, you get penalized uh, for winning. So yeah, as you can see here, Dishop is full open. I'm actually surprised by how full open he was this game, because this isn't like a random PBE lobby. This is like a bunch of, you know, like really, really solid players. Uh, but Dishop's still going to say like, I I'm I'm just going to full open here. I, I think he probably could have killed an extra few units if he didn't opt to full open here. Um, the other cool thing about Fortune that uh, we're not at right now, but we could potentially be at later, is fortune at five fortune it's very interesting compared to like previous trades you know they would just give you more stats five fortune we have metabolic accelerator but five fortune also gives you that metabolic accelerator effect i think it heals three hp now i think they buffed it per round um so it's it's you you can basically build your own beta metabolic accelerator uh, by getting fortune in, uh, which is really, really interesting. If you get to that five piece, which you either need a spat for or an Annie for, which is a four cost, obviously. So it's a little bit hard to get to. Um, but, you know, you could say, I mean, Dish Up's about to be level five. He could theoretically get to it. Uh, but yeah, he's continuing to basically full open his board. He finally starts positioning a little bit with his Kobuko in the front line so he can actually maybe kill something. But sadly, we rotate into this board with just huge mythic units. And yeah, we are not killing nothing here. Uh, item was here, by the way, he took the death blade from that encounter. He took a glove, which could be, I mean, it could be a lot of things. Could be LW, could be IE, could be whatever. Um, just show up is of the opinion that you really wouldn't be playing AD from a fortune setup like this. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Also, I don't know. Do you guys want to see something kind of interesting? I was talking about this in, uh, in one of my discords, but would you believe that this fight is like kind of scary like like he slams his he slams his chain vest there these crugs are just like going to town on our back lane like this is not the like, key and he has to slam the death blade like he kind of almost loses this fight i and i know i don't know i i brought this up i was like did they 
buff Krugs or something. I think it's just that a lot of the units this set are just not that good into Krugs. Um, but still, it's surprising to me that a level 5 board, I know we like basically have no traits in, but a level 5 board with a 2-star Frawliner uh, and these items slammed, I'm quite surprised that that board almost loses to Krugs. I don't know, maybe... I, it, like, it almost feels like they stealth buff these Krugs, but uh, but I think I'm just going crazy. Uh, in any case, we're going to try to continue our loss streak here. We have, uh, I'm not sure how many rounds to go until we get our next roll here, but it's pretty soon, uh, I believe, here. Um, just rerolls all the augments because they're pretty bad, and, and we roll into uh, to Blistering Strikes, which is pretty solid here. Uh, the other option would have been, like, a Harm Assist, um, but he thought the... Item grab bag, I think, was like good enough to take. And then once you get blistering strikes, you just take it. Now we don't have to build red buff or anything. Um, so not bad. I, I know it's coming soon. Maybe next round. Uh, we're gonna get our sort of like evolution of the of the cash out. We also get the opportunity to make Tristana 2 here, but Mishop does a very smart thing. We're playing Fortune. We do play for Lost Street. Let's scout around the board and see. And he sees that most people he's fighting are pretty strong. He fights, I think this is like T Light's board. Um, yeah, T Light's board is quite strong. So he's okay to make the Tristana. It also ends up actually putting in a Bruiser for line, which is good versus T-Lides, but a little scary versus others. Um, he's going to continue to push his luck because no need uh, to not go for that uh, because, you know, he, he's 59 HP as Metabolic Accelerator. He's fine. Um, and he opts to just take the 2-2 costs here just to juice his econ a little bit. I, I They really need to make these, uh, these, these choices a little bit more clear. Uh, cause Dish Soap asked this multiple times. I'm not even sure with, with ones like that. Like, do the rerolls last forever or do they go away after the round? I, I'm not sure and it's completely not clear. So I don't know. They need to work on that one a little bit, but, uh, it's okay. I mean, I'm taking another bad loss. At this point, we probably want to start, like, taking some slightly better losses. But yeah, scary fight. Uh, and the one thing that we do get here is this Ash on Carousel. Ash on Carousel, this, he also has a Giant's Belt off of this Ash. Um, so now he can look to build something like a Warmogs. Um, the weird thing about that is it gets sort of your Even Shroud component, but on the upside, we have uh, Last Whisper component, so we can just forego making Even Shroud, go for Warmogs plus Last Whisper, and it works completely fine. Um, but yeah, the Ash is ideally going to be his late game carry, uh, like I was talking about. He's really, really into that AD cash out, uh, and so it, it makes sense, right? Tristana item holds the AD items very, very well. Um, so you can just put your items on her and then cash out and pivot to someone else. Some people have talked about like playing it into Duelist just because like you already have the Tristana. Um, but it's, is. oh my God. Uh, sorry, somebody, somebody got raided that I, oh. I, look, it's, it's perfect. Anyway, we get our cash out here after two. Now Dishup's in a really weird spot here where he's only 40 HP and the dice is going to roll again, right? If he gets like a one, a two, a three, he's like kind of chilling. Anything more than that, it's pretty scary. So he should probably just go for the cash out here, right? He probably should just take the, the cash out here, but it's PVE. We're going to play for content a little bit. We're going to push our luck. And as long as it's not like something really high, it's okay. But then he rolls a six here, which is just like, like, like this soap at this point is like, I'm going eighth. And like, I mean, that's, I, I think the expected placement from this spot is definitely, uh, very, very, very low, uh, because we are going to we, we need to survive six rounds from this position and keep fortune in to get our cash out here, which is just horrendous. Uh, also, hilariously, we fight this guy here who has trapped their Morgana in the corner. So we end up winning this fight, which incurs the penalty. We lose. It's like 5% of the stacks. We just lost like three stacks there or something. So now we drop down to 54 stacks, which is just, I, I don't know. This game was hilarious, but I mean, hey, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother you this game if it wasn't interesting, right? So surely he doesn't just go eighth. Um, I mean, winning that fight, the upside to it is that, hey, that's one out of six rounds that we have just survived, which is pretty cool. Uh, we pick up this Amumu here, who's going to be a much better tank than this Kobako. The only downside is that we're going to have to sell the Kobako, so we have to get something else in, which just ends up being the Teemo. Uh, and moving items to the Amumu feels really good. We can just make Hodge plus Declaw plus Vow here for good tank items plus good, uh, good uh, backline items as well. This stuff really airs on the side of not slamming anything here because he really doesn't want to win. I'm pretty sure he could have slammed a bit harder this fight uh, just because the enemy board does not look bad. It has a, huge, a really, really beefy front line, uh, but he was afraid of slamming too much and winning the fight, but uh, he's got to live another four fights after this, so it's a little bit scary, isn't it? Um, but yeah, we, we hit 4-2 here. Fortune Crest is obviously very bad. We we need combat strength on this board, and Crash Dash Dummy is going to help a bit. So we're going to push level here, start rolling, and we just need to find some upgrades on our board. We sold the Kobuko, so we don't actually have 5 Fortune here, which would be nice to juice our HP up a bit. 
so it would kind of hurt the ability of our board to actually like play good units so in some ways maybe it's good that we don't have the kobuko and we can just play around this annie who's at least a decent frontliner move the items to a moon moon yeah we're just saying at this point we need to survive four more combats we need to win probably some of these fights and, and just take the the penalty it's not the end of the world but i mean you cannot continue to open at this point you need to you need to kill as many units as possible we fight this board here where we kill some not not infinite but we end up taking uh actually no we do end up killing infinite here uh, it's actually a perfect loss here yeah, yeah yeah we uh we just kill so so many there which is with the power of tristana with the power of a with these items slammed and we're we're kind of getting there three more combats left 26 hp i mean if we lose all three we are almost certainly dead but hey if we win one win two maybe we can make it we uh we shall see we fight this board here with the Caitlyn 3, which is pretty scary. Oh, and he also gets this bug where, and like, I don't know if it's actually a real bug or not, where uh, on, I think it's on this arena specifically, that if you put a unit in the bottom right, it like twitches around. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't heard too much about this bug, but it's uh, it's it's pretty strange. Uh, interesting pickup of Carousel here, by the way. It is Spatula on a Morgana 2, essentially. And this is Spatula with the bow that we already have to make porcelain spat spat plus bow makes porcelain spat which is actually really really interesting because now we have this morgana too that we could potentially play and we have a porcelain spat which is going to allow us to play for porcelain later um right now we can't actually play four but we can just put it onto the morgana here over the uh random ash that we had and and yeah like later we can potentially think about playing like four porcelain uh i mean maybe even six porcelain if we get another spat um but yeah pretty interesting uh, we fight this guy here, who's this Kha'Zix Real Comp, which is a really scary fight, uh, a really scary comp for us to fight, because it's hard to kill a lot of units here, take a 4 unit loss, and drop down to 3 HP, 76 fortune stacks. We pick up the Ash 2 here, who's a fantastic unit. Uh, we can get it in over the Tristana here, uh, and then move items over. It kind of sucks, because we really don't want to put this Hodge onto the Ash here. Uh, and yeah, we also hit this Udyr that we can just get in like this. We'd prefer to put the Hodge on like anyone else, but you gotta put it on the Ash here because we are really not trying to die here. And we fight Kurum's board, which saving grace here, Kurum is carrying a Syndra 1 here at 4-6. If, if Kurum's Syndra 2 here, we are probably just dead and the game is over, but he's stuck on Syndra 1 at 4-6, so we just barely eke out a win here, and that is going to be our cash out. 72 stack portion cash out. Uh, this is a pretty crazy cash out, by the way. You see all these units on his bench. It's crazy. They're all like duplicates of units on his board. It's all ghostly units. It's all porcelain units. And at first I thought, is that all he got? He just got a bunch of units on his bench. But then I realized, look at his board. He didn't only get these. He also got a dummy with a porcelain spat and a ghostly spat on it. So now he can actually play six porcelain and he can play uh, this Caitlyn here and play four ghostly as well. So it's an interesting cash out where you get all like a bunch of copies of units that work in your traits and then a dummy that's tailored to your board as well really really wild stuff and now now we're kind of cruising we're six porcelain four ghostly here the four ghostly is like fine uh the six porcelain is is really really nice um but it's uh it's it's certainly an interesting board at this point right i i haven't seen this board it also means he gets to play around ash who i think is a fantastically strong carry uh, right now, he gets four free rerolls off Caitlyn, so I mean, I guess this can let him roll down a bit right now. He picks up the, uh, the two-star uh, Alawi here. Uh, another interesting thing in this position, I believe he checked it like right at the beginning of the game, and he ends up checking it again here, is that um, there are exalted units on this board, or really there is an exalted unit in this Lux, I believe. Yeah, Lux is an exalted unit here. Uh, and there are two other exalted units that are actually quite playable on this board. It is Aphelios and I forget what the last... Oh, it's Aphelios and Diana, I believe, are the two other... Are two of the, the multiple other Exalted units. Uh, and so it actually makes sense for us to pivot into an Exalted board here. Yeah, you can see Exalted Aphelios in the store there. Um, he also opts to get in Huayd here. I think that's something that Dish Soap... Uh, I've watched him a good bit on this set. It's something that he likes doing a lot uh in spots like this where his board is so strong he's just gonna fit in the way here and he's gonna potentially farm up you know like a two-star five cost here if he can last five rounds on this board and he's six porcelain with ash and he's got this dummy like his board is not weak at all oh the other thing to note of course is that he got this dummy with crash test dummies um so not only did he you know get a dummy with uh an emblem on it but he also got uh a crash test you know another dummy that's gonna jump forward 
he wants porcelain spat here but Pocky ends up actually denying the porcelain spat which is quite funny so he just has to take the he just has to take the death cap here which is like i, mean, I don't know it's it's all right um i mean it's definitely solid onto the morgana there's an option to take like arcanist spat but arcanist spat really doesn't do that much here um compared to something like death cap third item it gives you gives you that percent damage increase so very very solid but yeah i don't recall at one point he realizes that he could actually play uh exalt oh it's right here you can see in the bottom left in chat where ramblin pops in a chat and says is exalted worth and he goes oh wait a minute wait i could play exalted i could just play aphelios and i could play diana really really easily uh so that starts uh, the, the set is so cool right with like exalted you know like it's something that you don't play through for for a lot of the game like he normally wouldn't have played towards exalted because like this lux doesn't really make sense to be on his board but then he got the porcelain spat made sense to play lux and now it again makes sense for him to play uh exalted it's really really cool this is also a pretty interesting situation here where he's rolling here to try to pick up some of these exalted units potentially uh and then he rolls one more time here i believe uh, maybe it's next no no it's this round yeah he rolls one more time here and he picks up this amumu and he's in this uh this location where uh what is it called an encounter where if you pick up a unit it gets 100 hp if any units you buy during those three rounds get 100 hp so he just remakes the amumu to give it the plus 100 hp i don't know if it actually like i imagine it doesn't stack it all together together and give him plus 300 hp i mean if it does then i mean this was absolutely worth even if it doesn't 100 hp is 100 hp one gold for 100 hp on your basically your main tank at this spot i mean i think it's uh pretty good um we went 1620 hp yours at 1820 so it's stacked and someone's saying it, it gave him 200 hp basically which is pretty interesting um but yeah i mean at this point he's level nine uh he's just looking to uh to finish out his board it's kind of awkward in that you know like he's gonna get out of this way uh the idea is we're gonna cut way and we're gonna cut uh caitlin um but we need to keep way in for long enough for him to actually duplicate our udir here so we kind of have to sack i mean not really sack because our board's pretty strong and we're winning but we have to survive two rounds here get the way to duplicate udir and then we can pivot out i mean it's a it's a big spike to get this udir too uh there's also a pretty scary fight for a lot of it but the caitlin lives with the hodge uh and we end up just getting through the entire board so it's it takes a sec, but we, uh, we end up getting there. But yeah, we have the Diane on bench. We have the Cephelios on bench. So we can actually get to that. Uh, and we can potentially look at uh, pushing. And, uh, but yeah, he, he's just looking at how he's actually going to get to the board here. Uh, I mean, yeah, this makes perfect sense. Poor Ghostly is it's certainly good. But uh, I mean, getting Exalted in here, especially level 9, potentially hitting level 10, buffing your entire board's TPS is just way more important, I would say. Uh, even though Morgana's like a, a decent secondary carry we can also look at that point at getting out of the um at getting out of the alawi uh she's fine but we could eventually get out of her later if we uh, end up doing this uh which she messes up for a second and then pivots back but yeah it's a funny board that we're playing three arcanist three ghostly but you know eventually we could get in potentially a different warden over the alawi we get it like set over alawi um we'll we'll see what the the shops hold for us but uh, this is a it's a pretty cool board that we we get to play here. Uh, I mean, that's just what Exalted does, right? I mean, this is, I don't know. I've obviously we're on PVE still, but I've never seen this board before in my life. Oh, also interesting. Let me let me do an instant replay on that fight actually, because this is something pretty interesting. We're fighting Kazix here, and the fact that we have a one star Diana is actually really really nice because Kazix jumps to the lowest health unit, so he ends up actually jumping up this way. Actually, I think he jumps on a dummy here. Um, but he could have, if the entire board's very tanky, jumped on our Ash there. Uh, but because I think it's the dummy, it's either the dummy or the Diana, he actually ends up jumping back to the middle of the board and we're chilling. So when you're playing against uh, Kha'Zix like that, it's actually like really viable, really valuable to uh, have some of those lower HP units to put on your board. Uh, we end up actually getting this ghostly emblem here. So this ends up being our final board. We can play four ghostly with ease. Um, we're going to roll down a little bit. We end up picking up a Rakan immediately, who's just a solid unit to play in to get Dragonlord for our entire board. And yeah, this is uh, th this is going to be basically the entire board. There's other stuff that you could maybe think about getting in, like he's looking at this Wukong. It's a little bit hard to fit, but we got to push 10 with Exalted. We have this Ash too. We have the extra dummy. We had all that extra gold that got us there. So our board should be very, very strong at this point. And yeah, we're just going to destroy Kurum's board. Uh, GM Blue has, I don't know what their board is i mean it's every board here is a pretty capped actually like level eight plus units or level nine board uh i'm gonna roll down a bit here sells the wukong buys the wukong um and we got probably two more i don't actually know 
Because theoretically, we could double kill here if uh, if our clone is fighting Kurum, because uh, our board is so, so strong. Oh, also, I remember what happens here, actually. We end up fighting GM Blue's board here, um, and the Zaya does a ton of work. We end up actually losing this fight, which is pretty crazy. Um, the, the Zaya just ends up doing a ton of damage to our frontline. Their board is very, very upgraded. Kurum dies here, but we're stuck uh, only in top two, potentially. We got one more fight left to go versus GM Blue's. And I mean, you look at his board, he's got... Upgraded set, he's got upgraded Zaya, um, upgraded Ash, upgraded Kaisa. It's just like the full suite. You just put every single AD carry on his board, basically. I'm gonna roll down here to try to pick up just some kind of upgrade on this board. Diana 2 is nice, uh, and the uh, Lissandra 2 is great as well. Um, what he wants to do here is actually swap to the right side, but he's concerned about that bug, which, like I said, I don't 100% know if it's a real bug, but he makes an interesting swap here. Ash to the top right here, which it looks really good for a second, and then this Udyr dashes, and it looks really, really bad for a second. But the Ash actually survives with the Hodge, gets through the entire board, and we end up actually killing everything. And that, that fight was like, for two seconds, I was like, oh my god, genius. And then for two seconds, I was like, oh my god, this is awful. And then in the last two seconds, I was like, oh my god, genius again. Uh, but yeah, very, very fun game. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch, and all my other links down below. Thanks for watching.